see one of those pretty like cartoon pictures of a protein? That's just an atomic model and it's based off of a map. And so basically structural biology uses techniques like crystallography and cryo-EM that generates these kind of maps that are showing you the approximate location of different atoms based on evidence those atoms give off when you like shoot them with x-rays or electrons. And then it's the job of the structural biologist to build a model into that map in a way that best fits the map. Now the crisper the map is, the easier it is to do this. When we have a crisper map, we talk about having a higher resolution because resolution refers to how closely two things can be that are still being able to tell that they're like two separate things. So can we tell that these carbons are actually separate carbons or do we just see this sausagey blob? We, the typical carbon-carbon bond is about one and a half angstrom. So when we're talking about one and a half angstroms, that's typically like atomic resolution. But it's not like you can just directly like say, okay, well, there's a structure you can see in this map, all these atoms. The structural biologists have to actually build the map in the model into that map. When they do so, they also have the, to contend with the fact that the resolution that you're given is typically the overall resolution. But regions of a protein, especially really flexible regions, might have a lower resolution. And so, although you, when you're reading a paper, you see, okay, you get a resolution value, does the, does the resolution at like a specific site that you care about, is that actually strong enough to model it in accurately? Do, they actually support their evidence with like really strong structural data for that for that exact area if they're trying to make a point about it. Basically, you want to be able to examine the actual maps of these structures and not just rely on the model itself. So today I want to show you how you can actually use um, tools like PyMol to look at those maps. So when we're talking about like the electron density map with crystallography or the Coulomb potential map with cryo-EM, the same basic idea Idea and how you can interpret these and how you can play play around with them, what to look for, how to contour these, um, the ideas of B factors and things like this. Basically, how do you go about interpreting a structure based on, without just relying on the overall resolution? So let's take a look at how you can play around. So for our example, we're just going to use this super folder GFP. So it basically it's a stronger better folding version of green fluorescent protein. And you can see by how many times it's been cited that this is basically um, used a lot as a really important tool. So let's look at its structure. Um, and so one thing I just want to mention about the structure of GFP is the chromophore. So the part that actually absorbs the light, it's made up of this like unique bond form between these amino acids. And it's really cool. I mean, you can learn about it more in this um, PDB 101. But one of the reasons why um, GFP is so stable and able to fluoresce so well is because it doesn't have to rely on actually binding to a chromophore. It actually makes the chromophore itself um, with its amino acids. And so it's like permanently stuck in there. And so this is gonna be, we'll see this is a really stable region of the protein and then we'll get more flexibility around the edges. So let's look at the actual structure. Um, first, I just wanna show you um, where you can find it. We're, we'll just fetch it directly from, from Pymol but you can find it in PDB. Um, and so it's 2B3P. And you can also examine the structure here, but I find it easier to work in PyMol. Um, so we'll, be, we'll do, use PyMol, but you can also do it here. Um, I have another post on PDB and how you can like use it and things like this. Um, but there are a couple of things I wanna point out here is so we can see that overall we have a 1.4 resolution structure, which is gonna be really, really high resolution. So it's gonna be good to show you some of the things um, but there's also going to be regions with a high B factor, um, and there's regions that are actually going to be unmodeled or partially modeled. So this is going to basically be regions where the signal wasn't strong enough to actually determine where the side chains, say, were. And at the ends, you can't even model it at all because there's not enough um, density there to see. Um, we can also, you can also see that it's going to be bound to things like acetic acid, uh, it's, or it's going to have, have be crystallized in partnership with acetic acid and cadmium. And so we're just gonna remove those when we go in um, to make it easier to see things. Um, and then the CRO, this is basically that chromophore, that unique part in the center that we'll talk about. You can also just download the files here too. What I wanted to show you is really quickly, in the, the PDB file, this is what the, Actually, I think the PyMol is going to use the MSIF. But basically what you can see is that there's going to be a bunch of different values. 
corresponding to the location of the atoms as well as different features. And so one of these columns is actually going to tell you the B factor. So that temperature factor or displacement factor and the higher the B factor, the less confident we are about the location of uh, the location of the molecules um, and things like this. And so we'll get much more into this. But just know that it's coming from this from this file. And so we're going to go into PyMol and we're going to fetch this 2B3P and its map. OK, so we want to get 2B3P. We can do this in the command line, but I'm going to just basically, we can do basically everything in the command line as well as more, but I'm just going to use the graphical user interface so you can follow along more easily. And so I don't have to look up some of these commands that I forget. So if you go to file, get PDB. So we want 2B3P. We don't just want the PDB structure. We also want to get this 2FOFC map. So basically there are different types of maps. This is basically saying your FO, so your observed signal, um, and then your FC. So this is like the computed. So this is the observed map, the computed map. And you're going to weight the observed observations over the, comp the computed map. Um, and so this is trying to make it so that you don't have too much of modeling bias going into your map. Much more on this in other um, resources that I will link to. You can also specify the chain name and assembly if you want. Um, so often the authors will have some sort of assembly um, if there are molecules that are basically, if you have like a complex or something like this, they might choose like one of them, one orientation, or if there's multiple copies in the crystal lattice or various things like this. But anyway, you can specify that here. And this is telling you, okay, this is the commands that it was actually going to run. So you could actually run this from, from the command line using these commands, but we're just going to do it in this way. Then we can press download and we get this structure. I'm going to do a couple things to make it easier to see what's going on. One of which is we're going to turn on the sequence. Um, and so you can just press this S button down here, or you could go and do it up here. All these little things, this is representing water. And if we want to, we're just going to hide the waters. And we're also going to hide like the acetic acid and things like these, all these other molecules. I'm just going to go in and do it like this. Um, there are more elegant ways of doing things, but you can basically just select it, action, remove atoms. Okay, and now we've simplified things a bit. So we're just seeing the protein structure. Right now, what we're seeing it in is the cartoon mode. We could, by, by doing this like action, we can show as lines or sticks or things like this rather than the cartoon. And we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to show it as sticks and we're going to hide the cartoon. And we're also going to hide the hydrogens, um, all of these and hide the valence just to kind of like clean things up a little. Okay, so I wanted to show with sticks versus the cartoon because although cartoon is kind of like easiest to see um, the overall shape, when we're talking about trying to fit into the density, what we're actually going to want to see, we're going to want to see those individual side chains. We're going to want to see things like this. And so this is where we're going to have those. We want to see the side chains. Now, how are we going to actually get to see the density, however? This is where this 2FOFC comes into play. And so we're going to actually need to show this. Before I show it, though, I just want to change the coloring of this. So if you go to the C, this color. So what I could do is I could color it in different ways. So this is just coloring it rainbow based on like the end to C. So basically just the beginning of the protein, the end terminus is going to be the dark blue, and then the end is going to be the like the red. Um, so this is just one way to show, so you can kind of like trace the path of the protein. But what we want to do is instead we want to do it, color it by beta factor. So it or color it by B factor. So B factor is the temperature or the displacement factor. So basically, we're less confident about the location of these. And when we go and when we look and we put that density on here, we're going to see that we're going to see weaker signal in those areas. And looking at this, you can see that those areas are typically going to be in like loopy regions that are on the outside of the protein. Whereas inside of the protein, especially you have this like um, chromophore. So GFP has a special chromophore. 
um where where can i find it in the structure it's like cro right here basically this special structure is kind of like this unique these amino acids kind of come together and form this chromophore so this light absorbing part and so the inside is going to be really stable and so you get this blue this low b factor this high stability and then out here you're going to have this higher b factor Okay, so now let's go and we'll put on the density because all this model, this is just a model modeled into that density. And so now let's show the density. So we're going to do action show as mesh. Um, and we'll start, we'll just add level one. Um, okay, and so now let's go to our mesh. We're just going to go action level. We're going to put it at level three. Um, so if you have a sigma of three, that's going to say basically only show me things that are at least three times above the average. So they're more likely, like the signal is more likely to be coming from an atom than from just noise. And so you can see that you can still clearly make out that chromophore there. But when you go and you look at regions that had the low B factor, well, now you can barely even see that anything was there in the first place. And so you can't model out, you can't model in those different regions very well. You can only see the backbone. So for example, if we take a look at this region, we can see that we can see this chromophore really, really nicely. But like right next door, we have this, where we also have a ring. Granted, in this case, it's not an aromatic ring, but we have this ring. Um, and you can see this is a phenylalanine. And you can't even see that there's a ring there. And right next door to the really, really nice density, right next door to even a phenylalanine here, where you can see that you get this ring. You can see that this is colored blue. This is a low B factor. This is colored red. This is a high B factor. Um, and it's harder to see. Now, if we can, what we can do is we can do a couple of different things. Right now, I'm just changing the clipping plane to make it easier or harder to see um, basically the different details around the density. But I can also change the contour of the density. So how much of it we're actually seeing. So if you go to action level, so what if I take it up? If I take it from a three to a four, okay, well now it made things worse. This is because what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, now I need you to be four standard deviations above the average. So I need you to be like four times higher than what's um, kind of like mostly noise. So I want to make sure that I'm only seeing the strongest, strongest signal. And so you can see that regions that had the dark blue are going to still be there. Regions that are yellow and that sort of thing, and red especially, these are going to start disappearing. And the data is still there where it's not showing it because that data is not strong enough. And so often the strongest signal you see is going to be coming from things like oxygens, going to be coming from backbones, um, things like this. Um, and if something has a low B, a high B factor, you're really, really unlikely to see it at a high sigma cutoff. What if I go the other direction? But on the other side, you have to say, okay, well, there's going to be less noise. Okay, so what if I go the other direction? What if we go to a level two? So we were at, we were at a three. Um, now let's take things to a two. And now we're saying, okay, we only need you to be two standard deviations. So we're going to include more stuff. So you see more stuff starts appearing, but you also get more noise. But you start to see, okay, maybe there actually is a slide chain here. What if we take things down? Um, we'll take things to a one. Okay, well, now we can definitely see that there seems to be some stuff here, but there also seems to be a bunch of other stuff around. And so we can't be sure if that's really noise or if that's actually the structure. And so when you're actually working with building in models, you have to be sure that you're not working at too high, um, at too low of a sigma, too low of a contour, that you're actually just building into noise. And this is where the fact that in extra crystallography, you have that FC, you have the computed map, that's gonna come into play going back and forth and saying, okay, if I model it in like this, how does that reflect the what the map should look like? And does it make the map, does the map actually look like that? Um, so complicated things when you get into extra crystallography structures. Um, and maps and things like this that I'm not going to go into, but often what you're showing is you're going to be showing at like a level of three. The reason why you're seeing all of this, now this is not going to just be noise. What you're seeing is you're actually going to be seeing the, the signal from the neighboring crystal. So this isn't a crystal, and so you're going to see like within the brick of the crystal within that like um, the unit, 
you're eating it cell, you're going to have actually like parts of multiple proteins. And so you can have this one and then you have ones next to it. So all this stuff you're seeing here is just going to be the signal coming from the neighboring protein, which is why you can kind of see, oh, it looks like there's um, like an aromatic ring or something right there. Um, but that's coming from the neighboring protein. And you can see that for like this protein, we can't even see this. It's got this really high B factor. Um, we can't see, make out the density. There are some regions in the protein. So here they seem to, they tried to model it in. There's some regions that they don't even try to model in. So what we're looking at here is actually near the end of the protein. And so you can see that it comes up over here and you start really seeing no signal. And then you start seeing so like there's no signal here basically so here we're showing the this is like the last amino acid residue you can see but it's not the acetylene amino acid residue in the peptide so basically after this point you can't see any signal and so this region is left unmodeled and you can see regions when they're unmodeled they're going to be colored in gray when you have it like this and so i try to select it and i can't see anything because there's no um there's no density there to build into that region is just too flexible and dynamic Sometimes you see regions like that on the inside of proteins too. So you'll see unmodeled within the protein chain. Sometimes you'll see partially modeled within the protein chain um, and various things like that, but that's what it means. Um, and so remember that what you're seeing is going to, what the structure, what the biologists are seeing is they don't see this pretty model. What they see is this mesh and then they have to build into that mesh. So knowing that what the, what the structure looks like, we can kind of see, oh, there's the barrel right there. Um, but it's the job of these structural biologists to actually build that model into the mesh. And um, by doing so, we're able to get these really, really pretty structures. And typically what we're shown is just going to be this model. And we might see it shown in this, like this way, um, we might see it shown as, we might see it shown as cartoons and all these various things. Um, but basically these are just different ways that they're showing based on the experimental data. And if you really want to be sure that this model is accurate, you're gonna to want to go and actually look at that mesh. And remember when you look at the mesh, you're gonna to wanna to show it in like stick mode or something like that. So you can actually see how well it fits because with this one, you have this cartoon, they kind of make it so that they smooth things out and this sort of thing. Um, so it's not a good idea to try to fit the, fit the, the cartoon into the density. Um, but yeah, so that is the basics of this. And so remember the higher B factor is gonna be the more flexible, less dynamic or, or more dynamic. We're less sure about the location of the atoms. You're often gonna see these on like the outside of proteins in loopy regions, things like this inside the core is gonna be more stable, um, lower B factors in general. Um, and yeah, so also when you have a higher B factor, often with the side chains, they can kind of be in different orientations. And so they might just like choose one that might be like the preferred orientation, like most structures you find it in this orientation. So we'll just choose this one and um, say that it's probably in this one, um, but we, we, we don't know for sure. Um, so yeah, so basically there's a lot more nuance in these structures than you might think just by looking at the picture of it, but there's also a lot, a lot of really, really useful data and important things, and I hope this helps you understand how to interpret these structures and how to play around with them. And if you want to learn more, um, I have more posts on how to use PyMole and how to use the PDB to actually get these structures and find these structures and interpret these structures and interpret crystal structures and all these various things. But this was just um, to show you what differences in like B factor and things like this would in the sigma level and that sort of thing would be.